Well, we're happy and proud to announce that Mechway has now integrated native Alibre files for analysis. This means that you don't have to convert to step. You can open up Alibre files directly in Mechway. Let's talk about how to set that up. Here I have this file in Alibre, and I go to open it up in Mechway. And with Mechway open, go with File, Open, and go to open my part in Mechway. But here we have an error, right? And when I ask what's wrong, it says that the COM DLLs are not registered. So let's go ahead and do that. This is a one-time operation to get things going for Mechway. We'll go into our program files. We're going to say C, and then we'll open up our program files, and then we'll go find Alibre and the current version of Alibre that we're using. And then we'll go into program. From here, we'll scroll down until we see the R's. And we'll say register com dlls.bat. We're going to right click and run as administrator. Now, just like that, now that we're back in Mechway, I'm going to close Mechway. And I'm going to reopen Mechway. Now, let's open and select our part that we wish to import. And our geometry is imported as a native Alibre file. I could not be more excited about this, and I think it's going to go a long way to uh, make this analysis easier to use. No more dealing with imported files, and your changes can be re-imported in real time. No need to do any save as-is. So, if you've never seen Mechway before, how might you want to do an analysis? First thing, I'll go ahead and add some forces, right? Maybe I want to add a force on this face pushing downward. And we're going to have it go in the negative y direction. Give it a 200 Newton force downward. You'll notice that we have some red. We can see what's wrong here. So we need to have a mesh. And this also says that this needs to be applied to a mesh. And that's okay, because we're going to be doing that in just a bit. Next, we'll go with Lows and Constraints, and we'll add a Fixed Support down here. So what we're saying is, we've applied a Force on this face, and we've applied a Support on this face. Next, let's actually mesh this so we can see the forces. We're going to go to our Meshing Parameters. I'll go with 3 and 3. We can go with a volume mesh with quadratic elements, which is my personal favorite when working with Mechway. I'll change these units to millimeters, and I'll say, yeah, I want my maximum element size to be maybe 10 millimeters and my minimum to be 4, right? So mesh size falls between these parameters. I'll say OK, and then I'll generate mesh. So we're able to generate a mesh, and there we can see what our meshing elements look like. You can also see the green downward force that I've applied and our red support on the bottom. Now, I used to select uh, edge detecting, and then I would be able to select things like this, or I can select whole entire faces and then apply loads and constraints directly onto the mesh with that selection. And that does work. But if I want to remesh my part, I lose the selection because I selected it by the mesh. So that's why I uh, have started applying loads directly to the geometry. Little trick that an awesome person taught me once. Next, I'll probably want to assign the same material. Indeed, if I right click and ask what's wrong with this error, I have no material assigned to it so far. So, I'll right click here and assign a new material. Now I can go with something like isotropic. I'll have Young's modulus be, let's say 240 gigapascals with the size ratio of 0.29. Next, I have no more things to do in my tree. Let's go ahead and solve. I'll hit this equal sign right here.
And there we have our finish. We'll go ahead and uh, load our von Mises stress. There you can see the most stressed parts of our model. We have a total stress, it looks like, of 1.144 to the seventh, and that's in Pascals. And if we're dealing with uh, three or four stainless, in Pascals, the maximum von Mises stress that, say, three or four can handle is in the 10 to the eighth, so we should be very well within our uh, parameters here. Finally, we can also look at displacement, the magnitude of displacement, and its displacement in the x, y, and z directions, interestingly enough. We also can animate and see if this uh, displacement is working in a predictable manner, right? If this was bending in some weird way, then I may have to revisit the way I set up my analysis. There is probably a human error involved. So this is a simple uh, demonstration of a few things that you can do in MechWay, but MechWay can go much more advanced than that. You can even do multi-body analyses. Here in Alibre, I have this simple assembly of a, uh, an arm, that can pivot around this stationary part. The part, of course, will be bolted, say, here and here, and this arm is free to swing. So what if I constrain these parts in a way that we can do an analysis with? Well, let's see what a multi-body analysis might look like. Here, I've been able to insert the entire assembly into MechWay. So MechWay won't just import part files, but assemblies as well. Now let's talk through how we might set this up as a multi-body analysis. First, I'll start by, in fact, I can hold control and highlight two, and we'll go with fixed supports here. Next, I wanted to find my force, and maybe we'll have this force go down the positive x direction. So we'll add a force, and we'll say something like 200 newtons. Next, I need to define uh, the faces that I'll use for contact. So I'll highlight my purple part and hide it for a moment, and we'll make this uh, added to a named selection. And here under Name Selections, I have my surface, and we'll rename this. And uh, Mechway uses the Master Slave naming convection, so I'll name this Slave. And then I'll be sure to show everything. There we go. Next, I can uh, hide my uh, other color part and we'll give this a named section as well, or named selection, and we'll say that this is the master face. And we'll say okay to that. So that'll be the interaction between the two. And we'll make sure that we show these. Next, I'll wanna make some uh, contact relationships, right? I, I want to know what my reddish part, how it will interact with my purplish part. I'll do that very simply here. And I'll define a contact constraint by right-clicking and we're gonna say contact. Now I have my master as my master, my slave as my slave, just like that. And we'll say, okay. We're using constraint equations. You don't even have to set up a complicated uh, area, a complicated mathematical relationship or anything like that. And there we have our contact constraint. Now, of course, for this to all work, I'll need to mesh this. So we'll go to meshing parameters. I'll do something similar to last time and we'll see how that turns out. We'll say our maximum will be 10 and our minimum will be four. And of course, I love my three and three. So we'll say, okay. Same thing down here, millimeter, millimeter. We're gonna go with 10 and four and three and three. We'll say okay. And then I can generate my meshes. There's our first part meshing. And then here should be our second. There it is, second part meshing. And just like that, we're good. We'll add some elements now, right? New material, isotropic. Let's say that this is gonna be 240 Oh, 240 gigapascals with a ratio of 0.29. Okay. Same thing here. We'll assign a new material, isotropic. Again, maybe 260 just for a little bit of variety. 0.3, small differences. 
and uh, now we looks like we don't have any more errors. We also have this uh, contact constraint now, which is pretty cool. So let's solve this and see what it looks like. So there's our finish. Let's go to von Mises stress. And uh, it looks like we've got two stress concentrations here and here. And the question is, you know, is this uh, just due to the fact that I've used a somewhat coarser mesh on this part? Uh, will they go away if I make the mesh finer? Well, I'd like to find out. So let's go to the meshing parameters here. Let's tighten this up a little bit, perhaps five and two. And with these uh, fresh meshing parameters, you can see that we're a little bit tighter in here. Let's see what happens when we solve. And now that we're finished, check out our stress. And we've got a few other concentrations. Very interesting. Let's try this one more time. This time. We go with meshing parameters. I'm going to go even tighter. How about four and one? Maybe even three and one. I'm feeling daring, like I want to over mesh something. And uh, we'll regenerate our mesh. And now I can solve. And there we are complete, so we'll close that and view the results. And there we can see that there's no real stress concentrations now that we have a very fine mesh. And it looks like we're at uh, 0.24 gigapascals. So I'd say these results would suggest we are right on the limit of what our material can handle in this scenario. Again, the beauty of being able to analyze things and change settings very rapidly. Look how I was able to quickly change my mesh and reanalyze uh, based on the outputted results to get the best possible answer to my analysis. This is the flexibility offered by Mechway. It's also very affordable, easy to use, and perpetual in license. A lot like Alibre is. So I'm so grateful that Mechway has been able to implement native Alibre files in the workflow, making things easier for everybody. If you haven't used Mechway before, give it a try. And if you're a Mechway user, hopefully you'll also enjoy being able to import native Alibre files. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and see you in the next one.